you know, I'm, I'm everything's great. Life is great until I look out my patio window and see flames like chest high, just going like a pot, like a round fire ball, just kind of slowly. Like, do you ever see like on, on National Geographic and stuff? They show those big wild forest fires and stuff. That's what it you kind of looked started like. a small forest. I fire. pretty much did. <laughs> This is the Roundabout Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm John. And I'm Jeremy. And today we're talking about fight or flight. What would you do with a 2003 Dodge Neon on your foot? And how would you react if you set your neighborhood on fire on this episode? Speaking of clap, remember the clapper? Clap on. Clap Clap off. off. Clap on, clap off, the clapper. All right, was there a cl- another clap after that? There or? might have been one or two. I don't know. What a what a way to we have, jump in. Have we advanced in technology since if then? You, huh? If you remember the clapper, comment, subscribe, share. <laughs> just to start off this episode with the same, b- just bulldoze yeah. into into no. Well, I got a question. Does that does that still exist? The clapper. Does, yeah. Can you? You know, everything's Bluetooth and True. stuff now, so probably Now you not. have to ask Alexa to show up. Alexa. She should, oh, man, you got Alexa over here. She should oh, yeah, probably be careful. Kick it yeah. out. Um, uh, yeah, everything is, everything's voice and Bluetooth and everything. True, so, like, so there wouldn't yeah. be that technology. I think the touch technology still exists. I always was amazed by that when yeah. you could turn a lamp on. Oh, yeah. Just, I, yeah, I always I, thought that got, was cool. We got one in our house, man. Were you... Were you uh, uh, bored kid like me just doing the they have like oh, three different my, settings at my boom, grandmother's boom, 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 house boom, 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 yeah, yeah oh yeah yeah it's yeah. some sort of magical yeah. science temperature or something i don't picks know up. i don't know so john yeah what's up if you were if you were <laughs> held up we're, we're jumping right in we're jumping right Let's in today if somebody if somebody maybe not held up maybe that's a little extreme i mean not that it couldn't happen but um Let's let's just say today we're going to talk about the fight or flight mechanism, fight or flight tendency. I we were I was trying to think of what it, what is that called? Um, yeah, I would say mechanism is. It's a good like something in you that either that either like an instinctual reaction. Yeah, right. Would yeah. probably be a best way to. Say how, that. how would you? De- <laughs> how would okay, you describe I'll tell you how I'd like to describe myself. <laughs> I always thought. In, I think we all kind of have a uh, a GI Joe kind of. Well, would you agree that I think we probably all have this tendency to have a slightly different image of ourselves than what everybody else Absolutely. thinks? Okay, I'm, so I'm not the only one. Absolutely. Well, I like to think of myself as like I'm the guy that you go to when mm. you know it's mm. crunch time, right? Yeah. No pressure, That's ice it. in the veins. It's on. John's John's in. I thought I was that. <laughs> I am so far from it, <laughs> so far from it, and it's actually really disturbing and, and depressing how far from it I am. <sighs> it's, before you go on, before you share any stories or anything like that, I want to challenge our listeners. I believe that there's some of this that is maybe it's maybe natural isn't the right way to say it. Maybe some of it's just maybe learned or whatever i don't know if by nature somebody is one way or another on this maybe they are i don't know but i do want to say that i believe that to be more um calm under pressure is something that can be learned i think it's it's not necessarily like you got it or you don't sorry i need, I need you to teach me that please I, john i think you i think you have the, all the potential in the world so yeah. so but let's let's hear here are some examples here <sighs> Where do we start with me? Well, let's okay. Let's back up. Let's back up. When we say fight or flight mechanism, this doesn't necessarily mean. And this is we were we were discussing this a little bit. We're not necessarily talking about somebody's got a gun to your head or you know to your wife's you know whatever they said something about your wife. Keep my wife's name out. Your, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Pop we, culture. We, yeah. Oh my god, I'm so sick of that that whole thing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but. It's not necessarily like, hey, put up the dukes. I'm ready to fight you, or I'm I'm a chicken and I'm gonna run away. Yeah, that's not what we're saying. It's more so 
in an emergency situation or just in, in general a a I don't know if emergency is the right way in in a, in emergent in a, in a situation that is demanding a, a, well a highly in, high tension yeah I would high say pressure. high tension in, just, do you keep your cal- calm or don't you keep your calm and and this is something that you know really you don't know it until you're in these situations yeah. on how you how you'll react and everything and and as I said already I 100 I percent I believe that this is something that can be practiced and learned well and, I would agree with you on that because I, I I'm I would imagine they teach this stuff in like you know police poli- officers yeah policing and stuff. firefighters Absolutely. any of that type of high type pressure of situations high pressure situations um shooting they say they say like that's something where you know people can be expert marksmen like just yeah. at a range but when you put them in a in a situation where there's a lot of chaos going on and and or and the stakes are real they they won't hit the target. They yeah. won't not not that they won't hit the bullseye. Like they won't even hit the target. You know. I, yeah. No. So, I, well, when we took I took my concealed carry class. Mm, how, how macho is that? You are what a man over here. Yeah, I'm packing. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> you never know who's gonna bust through this podcast studio and <laughs> demand demand a topic. Hey, it's all of you criminals yeah. watching our podcast, yeah. listening yeah. to our podcast. <laughs> but don't, we'll, don't you dare. <laughs> when we took that. Uh, I think you were there too. That's why I say when we took it. Um, oh yeah, the concealed carry yeah, class. Yeah, 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 Gary ran it or whatever. He talked about I I, can't, I don't know if it was an off, I'm, I think it was an officer that told the story about he was at he got shot at at close range or something like that. And the officer, you might be able to explain the story a little bit better, but he said something about the 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 ammunition the shell case casings were in slow motion. Oh, whizzing your, past his head. Like, he yeah, your perception like everything just slows down mm. like that. Like where it's, you know, in the movies yeah. where it's like, you know, that, yeah, that real weird kind of like morphing, yeah, um, sensation. But the, he he said that he said that the guy, do you remember that? Like he, height, heightened perception. Yeah, when, where like he literally he could read, like the brand on the casing. Yeah, he just it was I, just. I, that. I find I find that very difficult to believe. But well, we're gonna find out. We have the guy here in the studio, <laughs> He's sir. Come on in. No. No, I I know that seems, yeah. but again, who are we to yeah, decide? Yeah, I wasn't there. You, you, you weren't there. You there. weren't in that situation. Yep. But yeah, that, so what we were saying though, they train people train for those types of situations. If you have no training, some people have a natural calmness about them in high intensity situations. But again, I am far from that. I mm-hmm. thought I was one of those guys. No way. And I, f- I feel like you see this in military training and stuff. I feel like part of part of the boot camp. Um, my throat just made another noise. <laughs> Part of like the boot camp experience is intentionally weeding out to some extent some of the people who can't hold up under pressure. You know, you you've got to think already some of the people who go to join the military, most of them already, not all of them, but most, most. of them you would think ha- would have at least somewhat of a head on their shoulders in in those types of situations. But I'm sure that there are plenty that get weeded out yeah. during boot camp of like they just will they are not going to hold up under pressure, you know. And so, but I would say even though even with training, oh, I mean, you still know it's not real, right. you know. So I mean, it's really hard. I mean, you can train and 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 improve your ability, mm-hmm. you know. But until you're in that situation, because I, I I would almost man, I gotta imagine there's people that have been through some rigorous training. Oh, yeah. That buckle under the pressure oh, when it I'm actually sure goes it. down. I, first sure. thing I think of is like war or something like that. You know, it just it's a surreal thing. So, but just being somewhat mentally prepared of what you're going up against or what you may face is very helpful. When yeah. when unexpected situations pop up that you don't foresee, yep. Um, that's that, that's the only real. That's test. where it's like, yeah, it's a real instinctual yeah. instinctual test mm-hmm. that I failed miserably. <laughs> tell tell us how. Tell us what, now. Right. I, I now you said you have two. You said you have a second story. Yeah, the today. second one isn't that good, but it's just a, when you said, "Hey, we're going to talk about yeah. flight, on flight." I was like, "Oh, that that happened too." There so. was there was one recently that that uh, that uh, a situation recently. But go ahead, go ahead. You, you share share. Yeah, so, oh boy, so I live in a on a property that's very wooded, and as you can imagine, in fall we get a lot of leaves. Now, my other house, we had a lot of leaves, too, and, mm-hmm. and that was a challenge keeping up with that. 
but here is a whole different story. It's it's a fairly wooded lot, and it's very close to the house. Very close to the house. I mean, we have some planting beds that you know you have to get these leaves cleaned up to a point. I mean, there's a lot of natural area around us, but there's some areas where it's like, yeah, we need to get these leaves out of here. You know, and and and, and hearkening. Wow, I just used hearkening two episodes in a row now. <laughs> Hark the herald I was, angels sing. I was born in 1874, <laughs> and I hearken to, um, hearkening back to. It's not a very common word, to, Jeremy. To the to the episode about your OCD and cleanliness and everything that we yeah. talked about recently. Oh, that one we did weeks ago. <laughs> one week ago. <laughs> one week ago okay. episode. Um, no, the cleanliness. Uh, the cleanliness episode that we did. Uh, you with your leaves. I'm sure that comes into play of of where the line of leaves is allowed and where it's yeah, not allowed. Yeah. You know, so. I, I, as I had said in a previous podcast here, um, I, I like things organized and tidy. And that's not just inside my house, it's outside my house. So that, you know, so as I said, I we, we had these weed, or weed, leave issues, right? So this is this was, I believe, our we're a little in this house, a little over two years now. So this would have been our second fall that this incident took place. So the first fall, we got buried with these leaves, right? And I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is nuts. I didn't think it'd be anything near what, you know. So the second season, I'm like, we're going to be ready for this. And, you know, so I was thinking of different ways, to, different strategies to combat these leaves. And, 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 and some, some of the development of that strategy was just talking to people. So I talked to Justin, our, our mutual friend, Justin Fisher, who lives not that long or not that far from here. So he deals with some of the same issues, right? So he says to me, I was complaining about the leaves or whatever, and he goes, dude, he goes, get a get a burn barrel. And I looked at him like, that's brilliant. Why didn't I even think of that? Yeah, people got burn barrels. I've, I've heard of people doing that. I never owned one. But I was like, yeah, that's how you do this, idiot, duh. <laughs> so I get all excited, and, and so I, I hunt down. What a, could possibly what, what could possibly go wrong? This, this is, is the perfect we solution. Got it. I mean, I was excited. I was like, all right, boom. He, I in fact, I, I think I might even say, like, Justin, you don't even need to explain. I know. I got it from here. I, I get this. I know what I got to do. So I go and track down a, a, a barrel at work that was no longer being used. And, and I said, hey, can I have this? I want to burn leaves. And they're like, yeah. And, and um, I think Justin did tell me that you're supposed to drill holes around it for airflow, sure, right? Which sure. makes sense. So had some drills or had some holes drilled in there. Bring the burn barrel home. I tell Crystal, I'm like, I'm pumped. We are going to get we're going to be on top of these leaves this year. Mm-hmm. This Saturday, I'm going to set up this burn barrel. You're going to just be burning these leaves. I'm going to be mowing and bagging them up, and I'm we're just going to be a nice little system here. I said, we're going to have these leaves done in no time, right? So Saturday rolls around, and and we get the burn barrel going, and I'm bagging these leaves up, and I bring them to her, and then I, you know the system's working out good, and I'm like, I got this. This is sweet, you know? <laughs> Well, I didn't drill enough holes in this burn barrel to keep the fire roaring enough. To, oh. Yeah, so it wasn't, it kept kind of dying out, and we we're trying all these different things. And it got to the point where she wasn't keeping up, where I just said, honey, forget it. Let's just, I'm going to take, I'll bag the leaves, and I'll just dump them in the woods behind her house, right? So she's like, okay. So this burn barrel, by the way, was in our driveway. So this was Saturday. So the rest of Saturday afternoon and the rest of the day of Saturday, that burn barrel sat in my driveway. Sunday, it was sitting there. I think we, we were getting ready to go to church, and we're, we're heading out of our driveway. And I said to Crystal, I go, we're probably not going to use that burn barrel then this year, huh? She, and she's like, no. She's like, but, honey, she's like, don't dump it until it's completely out, right? And so I look at her, and I'm like, I'm not an idiot, you know? Because I'm <laughs> thinking, like, of course I'm going to make sure it's out. What idiot wouldn't, right? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so... <laughs> So um, so the burn barrel sat there all day Sunday, all day Monday, right? Mm-hmm. Tuesday, I come home after work. It, it's one of the last beautiful days of fall. Um, I think it was like close to 70 degrees out, just gorgeous, right? Um, and it was fairly dry out. I don't think we had a lot of rain at that time. So <laughs> thankfully, the, the storm was brewing. Thankfully, fairly dry. Yeah, the storm was brewing, right? So I get home. Crystal's still at work. So I go out and I let, take care of my dog. That's the routine. You get home, gonna let Tucker out to pee and poop. And uh, every episode, the word poop. Well, I, think I was just gonna say you you say the word harken a lot. I say the poop word a lot. <laughs> um. So I take care of him. 
I, I clean up around the yard. I'm leaf blowing, you know, and, and so I'm like, man, everything's looking good. It, it, beautiful, you know, evening. I think I was going to make a little, you know, I was going to sit on the patio with Tucker and I have this little, what are, whatchamacallit thing there. I can make a little fire or whatever oh, there. The little, just a little fire pit. Yeah, thing? it's like a little fire pit thing. I was going to sit out there and enjoy the, the evening. No, no, no foreshadowing. No there foreshadowing at there at all. <laughs> so finally get done with everything and I'm like, that burn barrel. I need to get this out of the driveway. It's, You're like, what a perfect night. It's nothing, a perfect, nothing could ruin nothing this day. Nothing could ruin this day. So I'm like, I need to dump this thing, right? So I grabbed the burn barrel and I just kind of glanced in there and it, you know, I didn't see any embers or anything. I was like, this thing's been sitting here all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, right? I'm like, this thing's solid. Solid. Good. Ready, ready to be dumped. So I go on, I take it in my backyard and I dump it and the OCD John looked at the pile of ash and I was like, I don't like this pile of ashes just sitting here. And I'm like, ah, oh, Tucker's going to run through it. And it was oh, back, it so was back behind the tree line where, where it's like, yeah, it was in our woods. Yeah, yeah, our yeah. backyard is, is pretty much woods. So guess what I do? Just guess if you're listening to the story right now, guess, take a, take guess a second. the smart move I made. Take here. a second. Don't. I didn't like these ashes <laughs> piled up. I proceed to go uh, get my leaf this blower. This is so good. This is so good. To blow these ashes around so there's no pile of ash in the woods, right? Pretty logical. Meanwhile, Crystal's still at work. So I go get this leaf blower, blow it around, and it creates like this big ash cloud going through the woods and everything. So I'm like, ooh, I stopped because I was like, oh, I don't want the ash going into my neighbor's yards. Or, yeah, you know, whatever, getting their patio furniture dirty or whatever. So I stopped. So fine. It's good enough. I don't need to blow that around anymore. So I... <laughs> Put the leaf blower back in the garage. I, I go inside, and I'm in the kitchen. I think I grabbed a, something to drink, and Tucker's standing there. I'm petting him. Like, it's hey, hard man. to listen to this story knowing yeah. knowing what's coming. It's just- yeah, and so, you know, I'm I, everything's great. Life is great until I look out my patio window and see flames, like, chest high, just going, like a pot, like a round fireball. Just kind of slowly, like, do you ever see, like, on, on National Geographic and stuff, they show those big wild forest fires and stuff? That's what it You kind of looked like. You started a small forest I fire. pretty much did. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I'm like, so I go running out there, right? I My heart's beating a million miles per hour because this thing is slowly moving. As I said, the flames are chest high. The, the leaves, as I said, it was dry as can be out there, Mm -hmm. the leaves were probably close to knee deep. I mean, this thing had plenty of fuel, right? I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm running out there. I'm trying to figure out. I went completely dumb. I (laughs) couldn't find my phone. I was like, do we have a hose here? Do we? uh..." So I'm looking by our spigot. I couldn't find the spigot. And so I'm like, where's the spigot on our house? And, And so I'm looking for it. Finally find it. There's a hose buried under the leaves. So I hook up the hose. I go running towards the the fire. I, I don't even make it a third of the way. The hose doesn't reach. So I start thumbing it, <laughs> and it it's literally like a squirt gun just squirting at the... And meanwhile, this thing is still spreading. It's still going. I'm panicking. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So then I go in the garage. I'm uh, I'm like, what am I going to do? And, and and I don't see anybody outside, mm-hmm. by the way, too. I, you know, anybody I can flag down. Help. Yeah, nothing. Help. So I go in the garage. I grab a five-gallon bucket, come back over, get the hose, and again, keep in mind, this thing is slowly creeping and mm. getting bigger. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm trying to fill this five-gallon bucket. Oh, thank, but, thank God it wasn't windy. Oh, Thank God it oh, wasn't windy that thank day. Thank God for everything that oh, day because this does have a happy ending. So anyhow, this thing's creeping further and further you know, out. And I uh, go get this five-gallon bucket, and I'm trying to fill it with this hose. But I, we have well water, so the hose is just like trickling. You know, it's not mm-hmm. it's not a powerful Force not a lot of pressure. pressure. Not a lot of pressure. So I fill it like an eighth of the way, go running out there, try to throw that on there. Then I just got to the point where I'm like, I got to make a move here. I, like a gazelle, leap over like all this stuff to my neighbor's house. I go hammering on the window. I'm like, you know, she comes walking over my my Nancy or my uh, neighbor Nancy, and she's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, I couldn't even talk. I'm like, I'm, I'm like having a meltdown. I'm like, uh, fire. And so then she's like, oh, and so I go running back over there. I wish somebody would have had a stopwatch that day because I'm I broke I broke records, dude. <laughs> I sprinted so fast. So I go back down there. Now I hear sirens. 
Oh, somebody called. I, oh, somebody must have called. Yeah. So I hear my neighbor runs over. He's got a fire extinguisher. Another neighbor runs over. It, it just pandemonium. Crystal's still at work too, by the way. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and the only thing I can think of in my head was, oh. "Wait till you don't dump that unless it's a completely out." Oh, and me going, goodness. "What do you think? I'm an idiot." Yeah. That's all. It was echoing in my head constantly. I, so the the fire department's there, the sheriff's there, the whole neighborhood's there. And some of these neighbors I haven't even met yet, so what a great way to introduce yourself. You Hi, met them now. I'm the idiot that just dumped the burn barrel in the woods and leaf blowed it, <laughs> which not many people know I did that. I didn't tell a lot of people that uh, I actually leaf blowed it. I wouldn't have told okay, them well, either. Yeah, I didn't. So um, so we finally get everything under control. A lot of people know now that you leaf blowed it. <laughs> now they'll know. <laughs> I'm throwing it all out there. Uh, so, yeah, finally get everything under control. I have this big char circle in my yard it looks like a bomb went off so i got my hose and the fire department's like so what'd you do he asked me he goes so what'd you do i go well you know i had this burn you know i'm trying to play it off like how could this have happened you know i'm like yeah the thing sat here i think i added a day i'm like it sat here for like four or five days and and i just dumped it and then i was just about to go you know what probably it did this was the leap but i'm like don't even say that i'm like they don't need to know this and the whole community is there right uh, so Finally get it under control. I John, got, you're all about bringing community <laughs> together. I brought everybody <laughs> together that day. So finally, everything settles down. Everybody disperses. Fire department leaves. Sheriff leaves. Neighbors go back to their home, I'm sure, laughing their butts off. I'm sitting there with, I, uh, by this time, I found another hose to connect, and I made it all the way to the woods where the fire department instructed me to just keep wetting the area down, which I did. So I'm standing in my yard. Oh, and that's the thing, too. We have a ring doorbell camera. So I'm thinking, Crystal's got to be thinking, what's going on? Fire department, share, you know. She, little did I know, she she didn't look at her, her phone. So she didn't had no clue none of this was happening. So funny. So she comes home, and I'm sitting there watering this <laughs> fire pit, charred, you know, whatever you want to call it, remnants of the fire laying there. I'm just, you know, squirting it down. And my heart, I, I'm like, I'm still, my stomach hurts. Mm-hmm. I just want to throw up so bad over this. Because I'm thinking. You're still I'm, just Well, riled, I'm in shock. Up. I'm, you know, I'm counting my blessings at the same time. Thank you. I literally thought I was burning the whole woods down. I really did. So Crystal comes home, and I didn't even hear her come home. She's out on our patio, and my back is to her. I'm sitting there leaning against a tree, watering it down. And she's like, what just happened? And I just turn around, <laughs> and I look at her, and I go, I dumped the burn barrel. And she just, whoa, she could not believe it. For like an hour straight, she just ha- was, she was at a loss of words. She's just like, oh, what were you thinking? And I eventually confessed to her that night. I said, honey, do you want to hear the best part? And she's like, I stoked, what? It, I stoked the I go, fire. I dumped it and then went and got a leaf blower <laughs> and blew it. She thought I was joking about that. I'm like, no, I actually did that. Oh, the funny thing about that too, Jeremy, and we laugh about this, is that a week prior to that, Dan Talbert had that get together. Oh yeah, yeah. At his oh house. yeah, and then we were doing that. Yeah, you at had the fire. Yeah, they had a, a yeah. controlled bonfire out there, and they had a leaf blower next to it. Remember, I, I even oh, made was... the comment to you. I said, "Are you guys using this leaf blower to, to stoke the fire?" It's and they go, "Yeah." And super I go, "Super smart." And I'm like, "That's brilliant." Little yep. did I know, I would be doing that a week <laughs> later unintentionally without thinking about it. Moral of the story, though, is that it what really freaked me out was my lack of awareness of where things were at my house, what to do. In what order to do? I mean, I just, I literally had a meltdown and buckled under the pressure, and it, and it upset me because it was like, that, you know, what you just, what you just touched on right there is some. It, so, so, going back to what I said in the beginning about how, um, some of the, some of the instinct to act in in those moments can can um it can be improved if there's pr- preparation, and that was that was one of the things I wanted to touch on with this was like knowing okay if this happens and this is why police do the high pressure training where yeah. it's it's not just target practice it is actually like clearing rooms and stuff or you know like yeah. like moving targets and uh or i mean there there's even i always uh a friend of ours aaron owns a laser tech company and and i always wanted to have uh an element where you could have maybe maybe there are some sessions at a certain time of day or something where there's uh what do they call it? Um, I forget what the, what it was called, but basically consequence. Like if you can be shot with the laser tag and there's a zap that actually zaps you every time you get, sh- you know, you get oh, shot. Yeah. 
where there's consequence awareness and and fear of consequences is is, is kind of like the way that I pain. I I, yeah, where <laughs> where you're not just you're not as likely to just be willy nilly and like yeah. not care because yeah. if you get shot with this laser tag, it's not gonna injure you, but you're gonna feel this zap, you know, and so like paintballing. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. That that's yeah. one of the reasons I always enjoyed paintballing was. People weren't just going to like kamikaze run out there because if they get lit up with some paintballs, it's going to hurt, you know? And, yeah. and so, um, so training preparation. And like you said, just knowing where things are. Okay. Children, this is something we can do with kids even to, to you know, instill some of this where like, if this happens and, and ask them if, if X, Y, or Z happens, what do you do? You know, what's funny though, too, Jeremy, I think about it. It's like in hindsight, I, I feel like I had a meltdown, but if you think about it, I did take you some. You did act. I did act. I was going to say did, that. Yeah, I, yeah. I may not have done it in the right order. I may not have done what some others would have done, but at the end of the day, I didn't burn down the woods. You didn't just close the blinds. I pretty much, I pretty much was a hero. <laughs> you think about it. I saved the neighborhood you know, from myself. Not a, not everybody. Yeah. You just reminded me of, oh, that's a story I didn't even think of. We joked, he just said, you're a hero. And I was joking about that. Remember when I got when I was driving the Blue Mills truck and I and that kid T boned yeah. me in the intersection. Yeah. And uh, there was there was a kid that had a little. He just went right through this red light and right into the stairs where the fuel tank is under this big big blue uh, dump truck, and uh, it started a fire like where the battery um, connections were or whatever. It started a fire, and and I'm like, grab my stuff out of the truck, and, which and I don't think I would have reacted that way. <laughs> It was, I think I would have sat in the truck like, oh, what do we do next? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, I like to think that I keep my calm in, in high pressure yeah. situations like that. But it was, that was the running joke. It was like, I was a hero. I put out a fire today. Yeah. You know? But uh, the story that, the story that I, it, it sticks in my head the most. And, and it was just a story where, where I feel like I did keep my cool and kept my head. And it was, it, it was just like, my wife Raven was the opposite. She she was the one that was like panicking. Like she like, kind of like we said, like she wanted to help. She wanted to do something, but she her 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 mind wasn't. Yeah, it's like calm down because if you're not, maybe that's the biggest thing is that in these situations, having the having the presence of mind to just say, get take a second and think about what's happening right now. I think what freaks people out though, and what did for me, mm -hmm. is that. Th the clock was ticking. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's uh -huh. like when the clock is ticking, it changes, you, you, you know, how it, you, how you act. It does. It does. But if you think about it, it's better to take that two seconds in the beginning. Oh, it, you're right. You're totally So right. that way yeah. you can formulate. Oh, I know. I know. For, and, and this was, and this was what, what happened with, with Raven was, man. And I, okay. So I, so I had to. I was trying to figure out something. I don't even remember what I was trying to figure out. I was I was doing something, testing the brakes. We had a Dodge Neon. This is the same Dodge Neon that we were driving with when that biker cut us off. Uh, this old 2003 Dodge Neon manual transmission. Classic. Um, it was it was a good little car, man. But um, um, I was doing. Do you think that thing's on the road now? Oh yeah. You think it's still on? Yeah, yeah, in yeah. service. That was just a solid, solid. It's only a 2003. My truck's yeah, a 2018 years ago. My truck's a 2002, and that thing's clunking around still. Um, 19 uh, years ago. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, so I'm doing something, and it was the driver's side front wheel. And I had to take the whole wheel off. And so it's just, I had it jacked up, and I, I, I truly believe that the Lord protected me to some extent that day because this is a middle of the summer, beautiful day out. I'm a, it's a Saturday or something. I'm off of work and I had flip flops on and I was going to, I was going to work on this just outside. I'm like, I don't, why do I need to wear anything other than flip flops? Why, whatever. And there was something in my head that had me put, uh, my steel toe boots on. I don't know why. And maybe I just thought like, eh, I'm going to get dirty or yeah, something. Like I, I, I don't drop know. a wrench on my foot or something. I don't know yeah. what, I don't know what, but, um, I, so I'm, I'm out there. And I'm working on the, I got it jacked up and working on the, on the wheel. And, uh, I, my throat just made that noise again. <laughs> so I was going to have becoming a, kind of a, it's cause I take a drink. I think that's what it is. I take a drink and then it's like, like your, <laughs> your trademark now. Uh, <laughs> the croak, <laughs> the t-shirt, yep. the croak. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I, I got the wheel off and I need, 
in in my mind, and this is, we talked about this, I don't know what episode, the learning episode maybe, I hate working on cars, okay? So that's already, just have that in your mind too, okay? I hate working on cars, and I don't know a lot, but I'm willing to try to figure it out. So I'm trying to figure out something with the brakes and, 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 or something. And, and so I've got the wheel off and I have Raven come out and I'm, and I say, Hey, I need you to start, start the vehicle up. Um, and I just want to see if when you break and when you start it up, when you break, if I can turn this freely or something, I was trying to figure something out. Did you say you had this truck up on, or it, on lifts or car up on it's, lifts? It's jacked up. It's jacked up. Yeah, okay. it's jacked yeah. up. Okay. Um, but I just needed to start it off, start it up. Okay. This was a manual transmission vehicle. Okay. Okay. Now, good practice when you park a manual transmission vehicle is not just to pull the parking brake. Some people will just pull the you, parking brake. You put brake, it in park. But you, you put or it no, into you put it in, gear. Yeah, into gear. Yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't have a park, does it? It has a parking brake. There's, no, but I mean, it doesn't have a, a, there's a not notch a park. for parking. No, no. It's either neutral or in, right. in, in gear. So good practice is that you put it in gear uh, to, to, Which makes know, sense. as an added thing of yeah. you know keep it from rolling away if it, if if it's on a hill or whatever well, well we always did that we would always put it into gear when we parked it well i didn't think to tell her make sure it's not in gear when you t- uh when you let off of the brake or whatever when you start it up so it was in first gear when she started it up and when you let off the clutch um when it's in gear, even even if you're not hitting the gas, it's gonna it's gonna die yeah. normally. But but if it's it gonna lurches jolt. forward, yeah. my foot was underneath, like the the wheel hub that the the wheel came off yeah. of. My foot was underneath that, and it lurched off <laughs> off of the jack. And that the I mean, it, thank God it was just a little Dodge Neon and not like a big old F two fifty or something pickup truck. So, you know, however much weight was distributed to that fourth fourth of the vehicle was on my foot. And thank God I didn't have my flip-flops on like I was going to be wearing that day. There would have been a really loud yelp. But it was, my foot was just twisted real weird. And that car was just resting on my foot. Like, it was on my foot, like the whole, on the wheel hub. uh, hub How did you react? Well, so this is, first let's talk about how Raven reacted. She's pregnant, first of all. She's like eight months pregnant. And she's like trying to, she's freaking out. Oh, oh, and she's gr- trying to grab the grab the jack. And you're standing, jack hey, you're standing there chuckling. And I'm <laughs> like well, Chuck Norris for for whatever reason. I was able to to stay calm, and I'm like trying to tell her, okay, do this, do this. You weren't experiencing any pain though, right? I mean, the same. Um, I wouldn't go that far. It wasn't it wasn't excruciating pain, but it but was. You could feel the there's pressure. a car on okay. my foot. There's okay. a car on my foot at this point, and so. So, on your steel toe boot. Y- y- right, yeah. right, right. But I mean, wimp. still, you're a wimp. <laughs> so I'm, I know there was no, there was no. I, I had no injury or yeah. anything. It was a little sore, you know. But and it's it, not ideal to have this thing resting on your foot. Yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and so, so, so she could not figure it out. Calm down enough to jack it up. I had to say, okay, give me the thing. I had to like <laughs> lean over and jack the car up off of my own foot. That is very. I just said the name, but that is very Chuck Norris. Of I, you know, and, and I was like, I, and, and we, so we, I'm jo- impressed. we joke around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But we, no. we joke around about that as like, she couldn't, she couldn't calm down enough. So, so the, the, the whole idea of that fight or flight is like, I could have freaked out. I could, I had a car on my foot, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I could have freaked out and, <laughs> and, and just been, you know, yelling like, get it off, get it off, <laughs> whatever. But, it, it, but instead it was like, okay, hold on. Just give me the thing, I'll do it. You know, and and, and I had to check. I just picture this. Um, hey, honey, honey, could um, you could you just grab the? <laughs> can you hand me the thing? No. <laughs> but it did hurt. I mean, it was like I'm trying oh, to remember. I, I'm sure. I'm trying to remember how my foot was torqued, but it was twisted, kind of. Okay, crazy. I want to know what what brand steel toe boot you had on. That's a good advertisement right, right you there. Know, you know, they were probably they weren't Timberlands. They were what's what's what would be more of a more of a common man's boot. Timberlands aren't that expensive. Isn't there like a? It's probably more red, like red. Is it, uh, no, red I didn't have that much money at the well, time. What, what are those? What brand is that? Am I thinking? Red Wing. Red Wing. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember what they were, but it was it was like red, a Sears, red claw. Sears. Red claw. Let's go with red claw. <laughs> it was like Sears, Sears. You know, something you could buy at Sears. That's a quality Caterpillar, boot, maybe. That's a quality boot. Yeah, but it was wow. Uh, 
You know, the, the thing with the, the one funny, additional funny thing that happened with my fire incident was there was a moment. This was kind of surreal, too, because there was a moment where I literally felt so helpless that I let out like a, nah. I did. I'm serious. Like, just whoever's in the vicinity. Jesus, even though, take the wheel. That, that's kind of how it was, dude. I'm not lying. I was just, I think I went, Jesus, help. Take it was like wheel. a yelp. Anguish. Oh, man. It was, it was nuts, man. Uh, I can't even tell you. Even reliving the story here it gives me a little anxiety about it because it, oh, and then. The John, enti- go take your allergy medicine. <laughs> I know. Go take your meth. So then uh, the whole night, though. Because not many people knew that I leaf blowed it the whole night. I was looking out the window because I'm thinking, what if I just blew this one thing little ember back up? Uh, and I was, I I thought there was a 50 50 chance of that. I really did. I mean, think about it. I leaf uh, and embers can sit there, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. Smolder. Well, that's what happened in your barrel. That's what I mean. You think yeah, about true, it. Yeah. True. Exactly. It and was, so that's what I was thinking. They were just smoldering over the days that were. That yeah. Was in so there. I mean, in hindsight, yeah, I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't react better. But that that was one of the first times I ever was faced with something that crazy. I mean, it that, that could have been very, very bad. Yeah. You know, and and yeah, I, I guess I could have just completely froze and not did anything, but I, I took some action. I guess that's that's what I would encourage people. If if you can snap out of the, the, the shock, the initial initial shock that you'll go through, take some sort of action. Mm-hmm. It's better than nothing. You know, there, and there's a it's rolling around in my head. There's this, like there's this question like if you heard if you heard gunshots you know uh, you're in a mall somewhere and you hear gunshots you know down the way what would your what would your response be and this is like I again not to over spiritualize but I feel like I would I would literally have to say God give me wisdom on what oh, to I do would, in this position I would hands down have to do that because no, no. because there, there's a part of me that that knows like i know i know from from training you know firearms training or whatever the the best thing that you can do in a situation like that in a fight situation the absolute best thing you can do is if you're able to run get away from the situation yeah. like that is as far as safety survival i've got a wife i've got children you've got a wife you know it's like it's like there's this there's 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 some wisdom there's a lot of wisdom in just knowing, like, I just need to separate myself from the situation. But then there's this, like, there's this part of part of me that's like, and it goes back to, uh, um, um, you know, with the episode we talked about uh, knights and castles and stuff that always that always there's always been something in my head, and that 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 idea of a knight like running towards the hazard, oh, you, like you think you're Batman or something, yeah. uh, superhero. Yes, yeah, superhero. I mean, really, I mean, like the. the, the that, and I know you're half halfway joking, but that gets in our head, you know, where it's it's just like that can cause you to make bad decisions. Absolutely. That's what you're getting at. Uh, well, yes and no, yeah. because it could be bad if you think that you're something that you're not. But there, there's also something where I think it's just in some people to to protect. And I think if you if you put it this way, if it was a situation where like your wife was in trouble and you could run and survive. But this is your wife. It's in it's in a husband to protect their wife and their children. Yeah. And so so it would be in you to just say like, okay, survival is telling me run, but I can't just bail on my on my you know wife or my kids or whatever. So so or well, I could have did that with you know. The more I relive this story, though, I think like maybe I did. You were Dude, braver than I was John. braver than I think. This no, is... but I, 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 another option I could have taken was literally go running down the street, knocking on doors, asking for people <laughs> to like, yeah. call, you know, I could have did that. Fire, fire. But no, what did I do? I ran right You're to the like, fire. Man. I said, bring it, <laughs> bring it. You call this a fire? No, it, it was scary. It was very, and, and anybody who's been around fires, short of being a firefighter, it's scary stuff when a fire is uncontrolled catches, yeah catches. it's it's because it's quick you know it's amazing how fast that yeah i love what you said jeremy about you know and i know it's 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 easier said than done mm. but if people can you know keep in mind when they ever whenever they run into a situation that's very high ten high intensity like that or um high pressure they're high pressure just like you said taking those couple seconds i forgot how you yeah, yeah. It, but taking those couple extra seconds even though you may feel like they're precious seconds you wasted 
in the bigger picture, those are those precious seconds could could make or break whether you make the right decision or you not. You can actually save more time by yes. taking a little bit of time in the beginning yeah. just by f- formulate a plan quick or think about, like, what, 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 what do I need to do? Okay, I need to do this and this. Okay, go, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's amazing. It's a, um, another... Uh, so this is gonna this is gonna balance a little bit here, <laughs> of, um, my son Silas. He's the he would be the reckless one of my family, um, um, and I I don't fault him for it, to some extent because he's just all boy. He's just yeah. he's just that way, and he doesn't think about stuff sometimes when he does it. But he but he just he's like. He is like the kind of kid that just he just like does he just has fun and not not in a bad way but sometimes it's just a little bit careless you know or reckless yeah and he cut his he was running around barefoot outside after being warned like not told he wasn't allowed to so it's like hey this is you get hurt you know didn't this happen here no this this happened at our old house okay and he was running around like right at, I think they was like the summer after we moved in or something but he's running around barefoot and he jumped. Jumped over some rocks, but he he kind of landed on or caught one somehow that like was like a sharp, jagged, like a cut piece of clay or something, like a yeah. drain tile or something like that was happened to be outside by these rocks, and um, he sliced. All of a sudden, Max comes running. And Silas cut himself. You know, he's on the floor or on the ground outside, and his toe is just just gushing blood. And he, we're like, okay, just trying to assess the situation. And it was another, it was another, um, uh, situation where it's like, okay, as a parent, I can freak out and that's not going to do anybody any good or, or, you know, keep your cool and, and yeah. do whatever. But he's, he's, you know, just, just in agony, you know, writhing and I won't even get into the emergency room, the emergency room visit for that cut. Long story short, he didn't cut any tendons or anything like that. He was able to get stitched up. He was fine. He was fine. But you didn't know that at the time. No, we're like, did he yeah. cut a tendon? You know, like Scary he looked stuff. like he looked like he about halfway cut his toe off Eesh. when he when when we looked at it at first. But the emergency room, the the needle for the anesthesia and all that was just it was worse than the cut. He wow. he had a worse time in the emergency room than he did cutting his toe in the first place. But but when when my kids get hurt, and I think I might have touched on this at some other time, when my kids get hurt, there can be I have to balance this, this like, oh, keep your cool mentality, like yeah. keep a, keep your head. It, it's a good thing. It is a good thing to teach our kids, like, don't freak out. It's not good. Like, don't yeah. panic. Don't freak out. It's not going to do you any good. It's good to teach them that. But I also have to remember these are children. Yeah. And, and there are times where they'll hurt themselves. And, and, and my like, keep your head mentality. This isn't, it, this isn't logical. Yeah. And that's actually logic and reason is one thing, is an, is, is an episode that we want to do in the future. But like to, to tell a, to tell a four year old, not Silas wasn't four at the time, but like to tell a small child, like cry, don't cry. You hurt yourself. Don't cry. It's not going to help anything. That doesn't land. Yeah. That doesn't register with a small child, you know, yeah. but, and so I have to remember that, but but there is something uh, to be said for teaching our kids, like, try to calm down so that way you can figure well, out it, a solution to yeah, the problem. Yeah, I mean, rarely is the right call to uh, uh, to lose your senses mm-hmm. and just have a complete meltdown. I know yeah. I joked about having a meltdown, but in all reality, I didn't have a complete meltdown. A complete meltdown would have been doing absolutely zero. Yeah, yeah. Go in the bathroom and, just, yeah, and lock going yourself in. Going in fetal position and <laughs> crying mommy. <laughs> I'm going to go take a yeah. shower. You know, you had that other story too about Ren kicking that window. Jovi or Jovi, yeah. That that, that one of your kids came I'm, running out. Oh my goodness! But right, I mean that yeah. one was like a heart pounder. Oh yeah, I, and and so okay. It, I don't I don't want to I I, I don't want to make the episode like oh I I spring into action. But no, I but am, these are these are high intensity Raven Raven situations. She 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 pokes one at me because there's been times where like if. If we have heard that, 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 that sounded cool, that one like sounded like a squirt. They're making some cool noises. I'm actually it's because I was stupid. Actually, every time I take a drink or something, another like, reason to listen to these podcasts. <laughs> that was a new one. That one that just came out now it was kind of like a drip. It was weird. It was like, like a, okay. Uh, anyhow, good. so so she she pokes fun at me because throughout the years that we've had children, um, if a kid falls out of their bed or starts screaming or something for some reason or whatever there's been times where i'm like 
out of a dead sleep. <laughs> Bat dad. Oh my goodness. She is seriously, she makes fun of me because it's like I'm like whip not not just like get out of bed quick. It's I'm like You'll decide where you're going halfway there, right? Roll, just get up, y- go yeah, it's and like, like fling yeah. myself out of bed. The blankets go flying, you know, like yeah. whatever. And I'm flinging flinging myself up this well at the time up the stairs. And just there's trouble, so run, run towards the trouble, whatever. But yeah, that time what you're what you're talking about um, was with with Jovi. I'm like, I'm trying to remember something else. That was the same day as the fire. Remember, I said, to, come on, d- no, that was the my s- fire. No, 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 no. Okay, the, the, just... the Blue Mouse truck fire. So, oh, this was a great day. Oh no, that I that's what I said. That, I do remember that. Now. That day yeah. was like I can't believe that this is all all ha- both things. You definitely on the got same your day. training. Huh? Oh my goodness, I was like like just super super high tension that day. So putting out this this fire, thinking this truck's gonna explode or something, I, not knowing what's gonna happen, you know. So grabbing the fire extinguisher, putting that out, whatever. That was in the morning, and then that night, Raven, we're all in bed. Everybody's in bed. And Raven and I are just kind of chilling, you know, like getting ready to zonk out. And we hear, I don't even know if we heard glass crack or like crash or or not. I can't, I don't know if we did, but all of a sudden Jovi, who is now my eight year old at the time, I don't know how old she was, maybe six or something like that. Um, at, She just starts screaming, 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 and then screaming the word glass and then screaming some more, and then screaming the word glass. And and I'm like, I'm thinking one of my daughters is is going to die tonight. I mean, yeah. no joke. This oh, was, I believe that. This was in my head yeah. as I'm as I'm running up the stairs, was like like a glass broke, cut one of the girls, yeah. and and somebody's going to the hospital or you know, whatever. It, like that's the thoughts that you, you can let go through your head. But I, I go running up there. Well, it turns out she she pushed the the this was one of the windows that I had to repair oh, really? to sell the house yeah stinking glass um but she she was in bed and decided it was gonna be a good idea to push the window pane with her foot and she's lucky she didn't even, she didn't even get cut but uh, that's amazing it slides down on the side of the bunk bed uh, inches away from where Cecilia's head is on the bottom bunk I mean it's just like the Lord protected us big time, but it's just like, those are the kind of situations where it's, yeah, you just, just you just, just act. Sometimes yeah. I, you don't even know what you're going to do. Sometimes you just don't have time to think you just fling yourself towards well, the, the, thank God, seriously, thank God for the, what happened during those situations for you. Thank God what happened is traumatic and crazy as it was, you know, the, the, the situations that, that I had or with mm-hmm. the fire, and I'm sure many of you listeners, there's been plenty of scenarios you're probably combing through in your brain right now of, of instances that had this type of urgency and chaos to it. But thank God that you got through it, right? And it does make you stronger, too. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, but in all reality, if this burn barrel thing happened again, I'd probably probably be an ace at handling this thing now, <laughs> right? I'd be like, oh, I'll get it. Don't worry about it. You know, so... Those things, as as scary as they are, count your blessings, but also realize that hey, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And and you got through it, and it will, it will make you stronger. Yeah. In, in those situations, yeah. it will. It, whether you believe that or not, it will. Yeah. If you've been in enough of that's what you were saying. We said earlier on here with police training and firefighter training, they put them in these high intensity situations so that it kind of like. I don't want to say calluses them, but kind of softens that. There's some muscle memory. urge to go into panic. Yep. Yes. You, know, and you just know, like you just act. Yeah. And, you just, and you're not, you're not thinking about freaking out. You don't yeah. give yourself that. Because that again, luxury. When, and like we just said, freaking out nine out of 10 times and maybe even 10 out of 10 times is probably not going to give you the best results. Panicking, panicking is the worst thing you can worst do, thing in, you those, can do. in those situations. Yeah. yeah. It's just it, keep, keep a cool head. And if you, if you listener feel like you already are a person that that keeps your cool in these situations, then awesome. Just where make, were you on that day I where dumped that burn barrel? Huh? <laughs> where were you, person who can keep their cool? Uh, but but even even for even for you who who can keep your cool, 
this is it's it, it's still something that okay think about okay am i prepared for x y or z situations and we can't and we can't get so we can't get so um caught up in this that we're trying to prepare for every <laughs> single situation that could possibly happen because you just can't yeah. but but at least be smart about things and and think you know especially some of the common things that can happen you know what would i do if x y or z happened yeah. And if you're not that kind of person that reacts in a way that you feel is uh, not panicked, you know, if you if you feel like you're a kind of person that panics or freaks out when things happen and can't focus, you know what? Then the preparation is even more important. The pre- the th- the thought process of what am I going to do in these situations? And you can't you can't test every situation. You know, we're not we're not cops. We're not military. We're not running through you know emergency scenarios. These are, pra- these are just these real things. everyday things that can happen. But even just having conversations with our spouses or our family yeah. can at least collectively get it, get like, okay, this is what we're going to do. If well, I'm freaking out, you help me. If you're freaking out, I'll try to help you. You know, like, let's try to keep each other. Um, yeah. And another good idea too, not that this is some like safety training course we're running here, but you bring up a good point as far as like, you should as a family be discussing, what do we do if there's a fire? What yeah. do we do if there's a tornado? What do we do? You know, I mean, that that will help lessen the panic when those situations arise, too, because you have already kind of played it out in your yep. head, yep. so to speak. Um, yeah, that uh, that that would definitely be a benefit to people. You said you said, uh, the, the one other thing I wanted to add mm-hmm. too, Jeremy, was that, you know, like you said, you don't want to get this so caught up in your head that, you know, every room you walk in, you're thinking like, OK, if a bomb goes off, what do I you know, that's not what we're saying. But mm-hmm. w- what we are saying is that, you know understand that unforeseen things can happen and will happen. Life I'm sure all of us, of if you've that. lived life at least, you know, 25 years, I think you could say that there was at least one situation that was mm-hmm. like do or die, or you felt it was at the time, you yeah. know? And, and uh, again, what really resonated with me, Jeremy, what you said earlier was the whole, you know, rather than panic, which is the natural urge and natural <laughs> instinct for most people, it's, Get a, try to get a hold of yourself right away and just take a deep breath and, and start really thinking of taking action on something. Yep. You know? Yeah. If you want John and I to, to uh, <laughs> develop a training course for this, we can, we can set something up for next month. Yeah. You just, if you yeah. go to roundaboutpodcast.com, we have a step-by-step, step-by-step hey, step merch, The merchandising yeah. is going to start here. Yeah. Little uh, did I know when I bur- almost burned my woods down that I'd be... Helping others yeah, you know, a year later. Creating a pr- profitable opportunity yeah. for, for the Roundabout Podcast media company. Yeah. Um, no, it is uh it is something to, it's something to think about. It's a, it's it's fun to, to to recollect these stories. Um even what it's when not we're, fun to live through them, but it is fun to, to uh, recollect but, them. But for it's sure. uh it, it is it's it is something to think about. Um and it's just it is it's good to be prepared. It's not good to worry. But it's good to be prepared and um and not to not to dwell on things too much, but um just to be wise on how we're gonna do this. So um yeah, that's all I got, man. I it, probably have a lot more of those stories where I freaked out, but uh if you have I, any I'm, of those stories, leave them in the comments. Let us know I'd, I'd like to hear let some us of those know guys. when you either panicked and 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 some hilarity ensued because of that or superhero moments or if you had some superhero yeah. moments where you kept your head and and sprung into action you know yeah i pull, pulled somebody out of the flaming you know vehicle or something <laughs> like that and and uh yeah. did what you needed to do so it's uh yeah it's it's good stuff so all right guys don't panic settle down everybody Won't just pan- take a deep breath we'll see you later all right see you guys Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Roundabout Podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Also, feel free to join us on the Roundabout Podcast community group on Facebook, where you can ask questions, submit ideas for future episodes, and connect with other listeners. See you next time.